Um, Katie grew up in Washington, D.C. on Capitol Hill, and all of her books take place on Capitol Hill. Now Katie and I live within blocks of each other and have for many years, but I didn't meet Katie until she published her first book, Lucy Rose, Here's the Thing About Me, in, 19, in 2004. Lucy and her mom moved back to D.C. to live closer to her grandparents. Lucy is an adorable third grader who keeps a detailed diary about her life at home, at school, and especially about her best friend, Jonique. Adam Mellon, one of the characters in the Lucy Rose books, proved to be so popular that Katie wrote another series of books um, starting with Melonhead. Adam Mellon is a nice young man whom everyone likes, but he has a tendency to act before he thinks. Katie's stories are so funny. I wondered where she got her inspiration. As Katie will tell you, many of these stories are true. Didn't, I did not plan for that very well. Oh. Is that better? Yeah. Okay. Um, my name is, as Gussie said, Katie Kelly, and I write two series that are for what they call middle readers, and you are a middle reader, um, and they overlap. Lucy Rose is in the Melonhead books. Melonhead is in the Lucy Rose books. And I thought I'd start by reading a little bit from a Melonhead book Although you're, uh, from a Lucy Rose book, you're going to see Melonhead is in this one, too. In this story, Lucy Rose and her friend Jonique are wild to make money. They have got ideas. They've been working at it. So far, it has not gone that well. But now they've got one, and they think it's really going to take off. So hang on. They live on Capitol Hill, which is in Washington, D.C., right? And they are wandering around, as they often do, on their own. And this is April 24th. This morning, Jonique and I were having a visit with Eddie at Grubb's Drug Store, and a lady came in to buy Berry Mary nail polish. She said she would rather go to the nail spa, but she saves a fortune doing it herself. Eddie already knew that because his, he has daughters who are big on professional nails and he could go broke from how many times they go. That is a handy thing for me to hear because we are two girls who need a fortune, I said, and one second later, enchanted beauty bloomed up in my head. On the way home, I told Jonique, once we're in the beauty business, we will be in the money. How come, she asked me, Oh, people pay a lot for beauty, I said. I know, because my glamour sister, Cherylee, she is rich because you would be amazed at all the jewelry she orders from TV. How much does she charge at her beauty shop? Joni asked. I don't know, I said, but she gets plenty because lots of people dye their hair, and Madam is one of them, and according to Pop, that is one expensive hobby. Are we going to dye hair, Jonique said. No, I said. That was an example. I, all we need for Enchanted Beauty is your completely deluxe portable two nail kit. I have a brand new two-sided nail file plus cuticle remover and tropical breeze lotion that makes you smell like you're at the beach, she said. At Jonique's house, we got Mrs. McBee's mixing bowl and Jonique's kit plus a brush in case a lady needs to have her hair refreshed. In my room, we found my comb that's hardly ever been used. And for decorating, we pulled the pink and red striped sheets off my bed. And then I looked outside and I said, man, oh man, it's raining like dogs. The weather always goes against us when we're going into business, Jonique said. That's okay, I said, we'll start tomorrow. Today, we can paint a sign that says Grand Opening. Oh, we keep going. <laughs> There's more. Um, so they go over to Pop and Madam's house. That's Lucy Rose's grandparents. And Pop says, perhaps I'll come out in a while and see about getting beautified. Men do not get their fingernails painted, Jonique said. Of course not, Pop said. That would be nutty. I am talking about my toenails. 
that's Pop, he's a joker. He went back to writing about the Chesapeake Bay needing more crabs, and we went out to tape up our sign and the hairdo pictures that came from my beauty spot calendar. I put one of my sheets on the ground for a rug, and on top we made an arrangement out of four white chairs and a table display with our beauty supplies. Sam's mom was our first customer, and she said, since it's the grand opening, I will go wild with Red Dazzle. You have an exciting attitude, I said. To speed her along, we both polished at the same time. I got a smudge on her thumb, so it looked a little bleeding, but she said, no one will notice because they will be so red dazzled by my other nine fingers. Mrs. Deutsch got clear because it was too hard for her to decide. Madam only had time to get her hands rubbed with tropical breeze. Then Miss Timoney came, which was the honor of our lives, so I told her we're giving you our luxury rainbow polishing. Every nail gets a different color, Jonique explained. Oh, I do not need any special treatment, Miss Timoney said. Light pink will be just fine. Of course you get special treatment, I told her. You're our teacher. After that, we had no customers, only Melonhead. So we made him two tattoos for free with our Sharpie markers. And one is a big red dolphin with three babies. And the other is a black snake that goes around and around and around his whole arm and takes up most of his hand. Then he said, how much do haircuts cost? We have not done any haircuts, Jonique said. Yet, I said. I have one dollar, he said. That's how much they cost, he said. Do you know how to cut hair, Lucy Rose? Jonique whispered. Don't you worry, I said. I have seen Cheryl Lee do it tons of times at the beauty spot. Can I help, she asked me. Of course you can, I said. We're partners. I got Madam's kitchen scissors. What style do you like, I asked Melonhead. Short, he said, and he pointed at a calendar picture. Just do not give me sweet and sassy hair. Excellent, oh, I said, and I started cutting in the front so he could see and have confidence. The thing about bangs is it is hard to get them straight. And then you have to cut the longer side to match the shorter side, and then that side is shorter, and you have to do the other side again. And I stopped when I got to his roots. Then I told Jonique, watch me do this side, and then you do the other side. Should you be going that close to his skin? Jonique asked. Don't you worry, Melonhead, I said. I'll color in the naked spot with a Sharpie. I watched Jonique do her side, and I told her, you have a gift for hair cutting. Then I evened up my side so it would look like hers because, according to Cheryl Lee, matching sides is the key to a good haircut. The back was the easiest, except for the part where Melonhead's hair is always sticking up on top, which I fixed by cutting off. Then I gave Melonhead the mirror. Thanks, he said. I have never looked better. Then he gave us his dollar, and we gave him a giant glob of kiwi gel for extra customer satisfaction. I hope we get a lot more haircuts, Jonique said. They're easier than nails. And faster, I said. Now I'll show you the haircut, and I wish I brought my scissors. Did you bring scissors, Gussie? Oh, we could be giving people haircuts, and that would be so excellent. You could have matching couple haircuts. And you, how beautiful, how handsome would you look? Maybe your whole family could go for a haircut like this. What do you think? Would you like that haircut? You look like a melon head to me. No? I can't believe this. Gussie? Someone should take this haircut, don't you think? Oh, she's not game. OK, well. There they are. Then April 26th, my mom said I cannot come out of my room for any reason whatsoever until I write a letter, which I just finished, and here is what it says. 
Dear Mrs. Mellon, I am sorry that I gave Adam a haircut without your permission, and I'm even sorrier that you don't like it, and you are going to get your family's picture taken next Saturday, which is the only time you can on account of Mr. Mellon's schedule. Plus, I'm utterly sorry that seeing that haircut made you feel like you couldn't breathe. And like you told me on the phone, saying it will grow back doesn't really help. But I think it could grow back enough by Saturday that if Adam droops his head so you don't see the spot in the pictures, maybe you could get it taken anyway. You think that would work? This money is to pay for the buzz cut that is the only solution. I am truly sorry in my deepest heart, and believe me, I do wish I never did it. Your friend, I hope, Lucy Rose. P.S. I think that a long shirt could cover up most of the tattoos, and I feel regret galore that another thought I never had was about that marker being permanent. You were right when you said the next time I will. That is for sure. Now, do you guys, do you like to write? You do? Come on up, because I'm going to show you something. Do you edit and revise? Do you ever do that? Do, when you finish your story, do you go back and change things? Yes. Come on, sit down. You can come up here too, Jonathan, if you want to be in the front seat. Sit right here. Because I'm going to show you, there is a re good reason for editing and revising and looking and reading your story over and over before it goes, right? Because sometimes a mistake can happen. Sometimes a lot of mistakes can happen. And sometimes, even though many people look at it, a mistake is in the book. And this mistake is in the illustration. And I'm going to see if you can find it. Jonathan, take a look. You take a look. What do you think the mistake is? Um, the, first the witch? You are 100% right. That is the mistake. There are no tattoos. There are no tattoos, but he has his hair cut, and we know from the book that he got his hair cut first and the hair tattoos second, right? Oh, well. Oh, Duke, the tattoos were first. Yes, sorry, the tattoos were first, but so he should have them on when he gets the hair cut. That's what I meant. So tell me, what do you like to write? What kind of stories? Um, I like to write um, make-believe stories. Awesome. How about you, Jonathan? Do you like to write? Do you like to read better than write? Do you like to read more? What kind of stuff do you like to read? Fiction. 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 Hmm? Huckleberry Finn. Oh, what a great book. Huckleberry Finn, that is an awesome book. And that, you know, he's a little melon-headed in his way, isn't he? He's a little tricky. He's a little melon-headed. Um, how about you? You like make-believe, but do you like it to be in the present time or long ago or in the future? Sometimes in the middle. In the middle? Like it has a bit of both. It has a bit of both, like time traveling. No? no? Past and present. Okay. Here's a question I have. Do you ever have trouble making up a story? Sometimes. Sometimes. How about you, Jonathan? Do you ever have trouble t thinking of a story? No? Never? Awesome. How about any of you adults? Trouble? Okay. We'll play a really fast game and we'll see if everybody can... We'll, we'll write a story in two minutes, okay? Are you game? Once upon a time there was a... Pig. Named Ralph. And Ralph was how big? 80 pounds. He was an 80 pound pig. Okay, how tall was he, Jonathan? 3.2. 3.2 feet? Centimeters, millimeters, inches? Feet. feet. Okay, feet. And what color was he? He was gray with brown hair. Gray with brown hair. Cool. Okay. And he had a friend named? Pinkie Pie. Say it again. Um, Pinkie Pie. Pinkie Pie? Yeah. Pinkie Pie? Yeah. Okay. And Pinkie Pie was a? Mule. A mule. I love that. A mule named Pinkie Pie. And the mule was how big? The mule was the size of a large oak tree. 
a large oak tree. That is a huge mule. And the mule had a talent. Banjo. Banjo works. A banjo playing. I would love to have that mule in my own, well, maybe not in my house because I couldn't fit a large oak tree in my house, but a banjo playing mule would be one of the greatest things. I think, so Pinkie Paw has that talent, and Ralph has, Ralph the pig has what talent? Fencing. Oh, they have some good talents, and I think these things could save them later. Do, is, is Pinkie Paw scared of anything? Oh, yes. Giants. Giants. Oh, that could be, I, giants the people or giants the mules? Uh, people. People. Okay. And how about Ralph the pig? Is he scared of anything? Okay. He doesn't have any fears. Good for him. Um, now, what does every story have to have? have to have. What is it? A plot. A plot. What else? A problem. Oh, I'm so glad you're here. We're making up a story and to do it very quickly, there is a mule in this story and his name is Pinkie Paw and he's as big as a large oak tree. And luckily he can play the piano, I mean the banjo. He can play the banjo and he is scared of giants, unluckily. He has a friend named Ralph who is a pig, a spotted pig, okay? And we just realized what we absolutely positively have, otherwise the story's too dull to keep going, and that is a problem. If you don't have a problem, it's a bore. Come tell me, what is it? A, gi a giant stepped on it? A giant stepped on the mule or the pig? Both. Oh my gosh. And it would have to be an enormous, enormous, even larger than normal giant because the mule is as tall. Oh, great. Hello? Hello? There we go. Is as tall as a giant oak tree. Um, so we, they're stepped on. Now, so it could end here. It could just end in disaster. But what could happen instead? What? The pig uses his fencing to defeat the giant. The pig uses his fencing. I forgot about the pig having that fencing talent. What do you think? What's another idea? The giant um, was just, he lifted his foot and then he saw that he crushed them. So then he like picked them up and aired them out. That is great. He picked them up and aired them out. That would, that would help. What's your idea? Um, the donkey could play so loud that the giant got so irritated that he left. I love this. The banjo playing was so obnoxious and so terrible to the giant's ears that he up and left, right? So that, say, what's your idea? That many moles and wheels will be tunneling through a hole and what they're standing on will be unstable so they'll just go through the hole. And they're moles, is that too strong? Yes. I love that too. Many, many, many moles are t tunneling underneath. And the giant, stomping away, all of a sudden, the ground is unstable. And I guess he collapses, right? Does he collapse? Does he fall in the hole? He does what? Oh, that's even, I love that. The pig and the mule escape in the tunnel. They run to safety. There's one problem with that that I think um, that the ground would be unstable, that um, the giant would also fall. The giant would also fall, but maybe he would just fall on a nearby building. Well, I, he could. He, that would be your story. The beautiful thing about this kind of game is whenever you don't know, you're thinking, I don't have a story, I don't have an idea, I'm just sitting here, I wish I wasn't. What you can do is play that game in your own head or with a friend. And your ending would be that the giant fell into the hole with them, right? Or it could be. Pig used the fencing to defeat the giant. The pig fences to defeat the giant. Everybody, if everybody in this room wrote it down, we'd have all this many different stories. So that would be kind of great, wouldn't it? Yeah. Um, I have to, I wanted to meet you. What's your name? Ela. 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 How old are you? So, Eli, I can't wait till I buy all of you guys books. Wouldn't that be great? Tell me your name. Sohan. And 
So, hon, what, do you love to read? Do you love to write? Do you love all of the above? You think you'll write a book? I already have. Get a, raise your hand if you've written a book. Awesome. We have, this place is jumping with authors. That is great. Oh, how exciting. Your parents must be so proud. You must be so proud. Yeah. You have what? I'm going to share my book today. You're sharing your book today? Fantastic. That is so exciting. Now, another thing you can do at Politics and Prose, can you go print your book out? Is that great? You could print it out like a real live book with a cover and everything. Did you already do that? You guys are so far. You too. Did you print yours out in class? Well, okay. Um, I think I'll read a little bit more. Um, Oh, that's okay, because I have many books. Melon Head and the Vegelicious Disaster. Have you read this? No, but I have a bad feeling about it. You have a bad feeling about it? Well, is it because of the disaster part? No, it's because Melon is usually a good disaster. He is a bit, he doesn't always make the best choices. Yeah, but she doesn't And then we have the problem with his, with his mom is nervous. And it's hard to be, maybe she would have been better to have a daughter that was really small and shy and liked tea parties or the kind of son that just liked to lay out in the sun and play with the dog quietly. But that is not the son she got. Say what? <laughs> he did. In, the, in book one, he does run across a roof. And that's what the kind of thing that's a problem for Mrs. Mellon because she doesn't always think about what she should tell her son before he goes out because it doesn't occur to her to say, don't get on the roof. And so, don't get your foot stuck in a tree. Exactly. What does the dad say? The dad is, um, the dad is not as nervous as the mom. The dad is kind of more relaxed, luckily. But he tries to balance the worried, his worried wife and his son. And you know how that could be, a little difficult. In this book, Mrs. Mellon has gotten the idea that her son should eat more vegetables, right? Yeah, vegetables. And then she gets another idea. Hmm? It's probably going to end in chaos and disaster. It could end in chaos and disaster. I think that's certainly true. Well, she has an idea that she buys a book. She gets a book from her sister a called Vegelicious Making Food Fun for Kids. Do you want to come up here? Come on. No? Come on. It'll give me a chance to find what I need to find. All right. I'm glad you're here. Have you read the Melonhead books? Well, at least I know there are two Melonheads in this audience. And Melonhead is the kind of boy that does what? That causes disaster basically everywhere he goes. He does have some disastrous moments, a lot, kind of. Um, so in this story, his Melonhead's friend Sam is coming to dinner and their new friend Pip, who is a girl. And he's a little embarrassed and nervous of what is going to happen, you know, and he wants it to be good when you have a new friend over you know how that is and you hope that your mom behaves herself right <laughs> so um there they are and he says I moved a chair so Pip could have the best side of the table Sam and I sat on the side with the valuable painting Sam and I sat on uh, oh sorry my mom called um, calls that painting frame rococo Aunt Tracy says that means overdone Ready, my mom said, and she came swinging through the door like a waitress. The first plate goes to Pip, she said. Now remember, Vagilicious making food fun has ideas for children. The first plate goes to Pip, she said, and I could not believe what I was seeing. Oh, please be joking, Mom. Princess Pip, she said, your dinner is served. My dinner is a horse's head, Pip asked. A unicorn head, my mom said. My sister tells me girls love unicorns. Decapitated unicorns. 
My sister Mavis is saving up to buy a real one, Pip said. She's only six. It is not only beautiful. This unicorn is healthy, my mom said. The cabbage, the unicorn's mane is made of cabbage slaw, and the horn is an ice cream cone frosted with pink mayonnaise. How did it get pink, Pip asked. Beet juice, my mom said. Isn't that smart? Wow, Pip said. That idea came from my own head, my mother said. Once I got going, I discovered I have a wide creative streak. I can tell, Pip said. The horn is filled with pureed yellow wax beans, my mom said. Pretty good sounding delicious, huh? <laughs> What's the face made of, Pip asked. My mom turned her plate so the unicorn's nose pointed away from Pip. Now you can see it's an ordinary butternut squash, she said. She returned it. But before your eyes, the squash is transformed into a unicorn. The eyelashes are dillweed. This unicorn is chock full of potassium. Come on in, guys. <laughs> Supersonic message to Sam. She is making Pip eat weeds. Isn't it terrific, my mom said. Terrific, Pip asked, said. Adam's Aunt Tracy drove down from Baltimore this morning, and she brought me a cookbook called Vegilicious Making Food Fun. By making it look like a unicorn, Pip said. The author, Bernice Bombano, says children reject vegetables because parents don't present them in exciting ways. But those dull days are over. I couldn't look at Pip. The head is filled with Bombano's magic mix, my mom said. It's really yogurt with spinach and blue cheese and bean sprouts. Trick food must take a long time to make, Pip said. About four hours, my mom told her. There's a lot of chopping. But it's worth it. Bernice Bombano says a child's best friends should be nutritious and delicious. She pointed at Sam. You're next. She was back in a flash. What is it, Sam asked. A veggie-powered sports car, of course, she said. Doesn't it look real? Real, Sam asked. My face was burning. Would you like it if you had your friends over and your mother did this? Uh, no. No. How about you? Would you like it if your mom made this delicious dinner for your friends? No? Well, see if you, you would like this one better. Maybe this will save the day. Um, sorry. Oh. Um, Sam picked... Uh, oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. I lost it. Oh, a veggie-spoured sports car, of course, she said. Doesn't it look real? Real? Sam asked. My face was burning. Sam was in shock. Pip looked dizzy. The main part of the car is a hollowed out baby zucchini, my mom said, and the hood really works. She peeled back a green flap of zucchini skin. Take a guess what's under the motor, my mom said. Well, it might be smarter not to tell them, but I think she's very proud. You might have a good idea. You will be a very tricky parent, I think, when your day comes. Um, bingo, she said. It's Bomba Bombano's magic mix. The engine parts are turkey strips and grapes and hard-boiled eggs and sunflower seeds, and I made the hoses out of radish peelings. The knobs are kern kernels of corn, and it's all held together with homemade barbecue mayonnaise. May I offer you this for lunch? <laughs> Would you like it? No, you wouldn't. You would try it, because you are a genuine melon head, I think. Um, that is some engine, I said. No one would even guess it's food, Pip said. You think that's true? Yeah. Look at the steering wheel. It's a carrot coin with a raisin horn, and the seats are mushroom caps. And can you believe the wheels are Brussels sprouts, my mom asked. Adam, I'll be back with you. When the kitchen door sung shut, Pip whispered, no matter how you disguise them, Brussels sprouts are still small, stinky cabbages. I whispered back, I'm sorry for inviting you. I'm sorry to be invited, she said. Ditto, Sam said. Even baby Julia wouldn't eat this, and she eats, she eats milk bones. Ta-da, my mom said. Captain Adam, here's your yacht. I would rather have a dinghy. This hull is a half a bait, 
Japanese eggplant cut the long way. Aunt Tracy says the beauty of eggplant is that it absorbs the taste of whatever is nearby. It smelled like sock. <laughs> the deck is made of turkey planks. The galley is underneath. Is it loaded with Bombano's magic mix, I asked. Good guess, DB. What's DB, Pip said. Darling boy, my mom says, he doesn't want people to know I call him that, so we use his initials. Pip is people, Mom. Chapter 13. When I looked at my yacht, all I could think was, oh, my ruined taste buds. Also, that Aunt Tracy is a failure of a relative. My next thought was even worse. What, when food takes a load of work to make, you kind of have to eat it. What's in the yellow bowl, said Sam asked. Crab salad, my mom said. It's protein-packed and delicious. She scooped a pile on her plate and sat down. Who I'm stuffed, Sam said. Sam, my mom said. <laughs> you, 20 minutes ago, you said you were so hungry, your belly button was scraping against your backbone. I kicked Sam under the table. He's kidding, Mom, I said. I took a bite so the, the size of my eyeball. Big mistake. Well, Mom said, mm-hmm, I said. Tostiola, Sam said. Creative, Pip said. My mom smiled. Once again, my sister was right. Sam's mouth was packed to the gums with many car parts. His cheeks were lumpy. Pip cut her unicorn into mini chunks, and then she cut the chunks in half, and I think her plan was to keep cutting until the pieces were sand-sized. Then, for the second time in a week, we were saved by the phone. <gasps> I'm sorry to be rude, but it must be Dad, Adam's dad calling from the office. I'll be back quickly, my mom said. The instant the door shut, Sam spit two wads of car into his hands. It tastes like slime, he said. You want slime, Pip said? Try unicorn brains. I'll throw up if I eat crab meat, Sam said. Honey, my mom was saying on the phone in the kitchen, I feel like super mom. I mean, yes, it was a lot of work and complicated, but you should have seen their faces when they saw their dinners. <laughs> they couldn't believe that I made them. Then I laughed. Then she laughed. You're right, my mom said. She Pip probably never gets unicorn at home. That's true, Pip said. She scrubbed her tongue with a napkin. Quick, I said, we're dumping this stuff out the window. Pip put her plate in her lap and backed up and spun around. Pip uses a wheelchair, so she's spinning. It won't open, Sam whispered. Push the top up, Pip said. I'll pull the bottom. I'll do it, I said. <laughs> no time, Pip said. I'm stronger. We could hear my mom telling my dad, I should get back in the table so I can enjoy my success. Oh, my sweet orangutan, she's about to hang up, I said. That was when I got the idea of the century. I dropped to my knees. Escape hatch! I poked my fingers through the golden vent cover on the floor and I yanked. Hurry, Sam hissed. My mom's voice came through the air. I miss you more. Pip looked down at the blackness. Where does it go? Down the heat duct, into the furnace, I said, it, where it will burn up. In the summer? Sam asked. Easy peasy, I'll turn on the heat, bam. Then the evidence will be ashes. Pip tipped her plate and said, goodbye, little unicorn head. Sam tucked, chucked his car, and I whispered, so long, yacht. Grab the crab, Pip said. A flash and a half later, we were back at the table. It was the closest call of my life. My whole head was pouring sweat. My mom looked at me with ping pong ball eyes. She knows, I'm sorry, mom, I said. Sorry? I'm thrilled you cleaned your plates. Please don't be sorry. We're sorry we finished without you, Pip said. We couldn't stop ourselves, Sam said. True. You ate the crab salad, too, she said. We cleaned out that bowl, Pip said. I never expected you'd eat crab meat, my mom said. You didn't? No, she said. I thought that was a grown-up food. But now that I know you like it, it's worth the money. So what do you think is going to happen? Tremendous food fight eventually. Tremendous food fight. What do you think? She's going to make it again. She's going to make it again. I think that might be likely because she thinks she, they like it. What do you think? I don't have a prediction. You don't have a prediction. Do you have a prediction? Their friends are going to tease them and they're going to tell everybody 
or they're going to keep them to themselves because the kids would probably tell them it's their mom. You know, that's interesting that you would, that, that I, I think a lot of girls I know worry about that, that, that they would tell their friends and then everybody would be like, oh, that'd be the worst. Do you have an idea what might happen? Do you have a prediction? Okay, now they dumped it down the heat vent, right? And it is summer. And what do you think? Has anybody ever had food go bad on them when you leave it out? Especially the smell of old crab and old mayonnaise and old eggs? So we'll see. We'll see how Sam's house is, I mean, how Melonhead's house is going to smell. Okay, I have a quick, I, I, I'm almost out of time, which I can't believe because it flew by. But it, do any of you guys have questions about being a writer? Any questions? Yes. Which books did I write? Um, I've written a series called Lucy Rose, and there are four books in that. Lucy Rose, Here's the Thing About Me is the first one. And I've written a series called Melonhead. And yes, here's, here is a Lucy Rose book, although they now actually have a different cover. And I don't know if you missed when they gave him a haircut. They gave Al Melonhead a haircut. It's pretty nice. Um, so I've written four Melonhead books and four Lucy Rose books, and the next Melonhead book comes out in September. So another, any other questions? Okay, now you know how to write a story in two minutes. Yeah. What's your I'm going to read the series and then tell my friends I talked to the author. High five. I love it. I love that. That is, uh, that is the kind of fan that all authors want to have. So thank you, guys. Um, I'm really happy you came, and have a great time today. <laughs>